All right, now we're into homework number four, and we're gonna go over all the equations first, and then we're gonna work a problem. Um, this one basically says, we start with the horizontal direction, x, right, is our, is our distance. And so x equals the velocity in x, the initial velocity in x times time. Now, in, in um, projectile motion, your velocity in x does not change. There is no acceleration in x. So it's just v naught x the whole time. Uh, so we get x equals v naught x. If you compare this to what we had before, um, this is simply setting the acceleration in the horizontal direction to zero and setting the initial position to zero and you're left with x equals v naught x. In the vertical direction, all we've done is set the initial um, position to zero and we're now calling the initial velocity v naught y. Why are we calling v naught y and v naught x? Because we now have an x direction and a y direction and we don't want to get them confused. So in the y direction, which is vertical, straight up and down, the distance, your height, right, is v naught y t minus one half g t squared where g is the acceleration of gravity, in this case 9.8 meters per second squared. If you have an initial velocity v naught at an angle theta, so what does this mean? Initial velocity v naught at an angle theta, right? So you compare everything and pretend that's a straight line going horizontal. You compare everything to the horizontal, right? And so you're going to launch a projectile off in that direction. This angle right there is theta. Yes, I draw lovely, lovely diagrams. Do this one more time. That's the horizontal. That's the angle you're launching something at. That is theta, the angle between the horizontal and the direction that you're launching things in. I hope that helps make things clear. All right, so when you have initial velocity v naught at an angle theta, then you can express the x component as v naught cosine theta and the y component as v naught sine theta. For those of you that have had just a little bit of trig, right, what does this mean? Well, It's a triangle, right? There's theta. The adjacent sign is cosine, right? And then, so that's the x velocity, and the opposite sign side is sine theta, right? So v naught, if this is v naught, right? Then this is v naught cosine theta and this is v naught sine theta. Those are the two components, our two legs of the triangle that make up the velocity vector v naught at the angle theta. Uh, range d of the projectile, how far does it go down range once you fire it off, depends on two things, theta and v naught squared. So if you look at this and look at theta versus v naught squared and you're trying to figure out well what is the maximum this can be you want sine of 2 theta to be the maximum what is the largest sine of 2 theta can be well the answer is it can be 1 right so you need to figure out at what point does sine of 2 theta become 1 um, the next bit is about being in orbit and escaping from a gravitational well so the orbital velocity, the velocity of any satellite in orbit, all of them at the same distance are all going the same velocity. So the velocity of any satellite in orbit is given by this equation, the square root of g m over r. Big G is a universal gravitational constant. You can see it here. Big M is the mass of whatever you're going around. Um, usually we talk about we're going around the earth or we're going around the sun uh, you could be talking about other things this equation only applies if the object going around something is much smaller than the main object that you're using this m from uh, so if you're talking about two things that are kind of the same size 
this is not quite the right equation to use. But we're not worried about that here. We're just talking about going around planets, moons, stars, things like that. This R in the bottom, this R is the distance from the center of the planet or the center of the sun. All right, so it's not your height above sea level, it's distance from the center of the earth if you're talking about satellites. The other thing is the escape velocity. So if you're sitting on the surface of a planet, a moon, or, or a crispy critter on the surface of a star, um, then this tells you how fast you have to go to completely leave the planet all right, or moon. And so you can see it's very similar to orbital velocity. Right? Very similar to orbital velocity. It's the square root of 2gm over r. And all these symbols here mean exactly the same thing they do up here. g is the universal gravitational constant. m is the mass of whatever planet you're going around. Um, you know, and then r is your distance from the center of that. Okay, now that we're through these, we're going to switch over and we're going to solve a problem. Okay, on to the problem. The problem we're going to take on is problem number three, which introduces yet another equation. When you fire off a projectile, because we know the initial velocity and we know the acceleration of gravity and we know the angle we fired it at, we know how long it's going to be in the air. And that's given by this equation, the time of flight. All right, T sub TOF, and the time of flight is twice the initial velocity divided by the acceleration of gravity times sine theta. All right. So in this problem, what do we have? We have the initial velocity, 52.08 meters per second. We have the angle, 44.84 degrees above the horizontal. And we want to know how long is it in the air? Well, we just put everything into the equation correctly. G is 9.8 for this exercise. That was given at the very top. So 2 times 52.08 divided by 9.8 times. Here's where you have to be careful with your calculator or if you're doing like I am using Excel. Excel takes radians and so I have to convert from degrees to radians. Um, your calculator should have a radians or degrees button. You need to make sure your calculator is in degrees mode um, in order to calculate this or you need to convert it to radians but I suggest you just go to degrees mode. Alright so we're just going to calculate this 7.495 alright so we get time of flight is 2 times Oh, let me do some parentheses. 2 times 52.08 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of 44.84 degrees equals. And I calculated 7.495 and that is going to be seconds. How do we know it's seconds? We have meters per second over meters per second squared. That leaves a one over second in the denominator, which becomes a second in the numerator. And that's it for problem three.